Hey everyone, it's Emily. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make three Halloween room decorations that are easy to make. The ideas are a cauldron, a coffin jewelry dish, and a wreath. Let's get on with the video. The first idea I'm going to show you how to make is a cauldron. You want to start painting something that is glass and it's in a shape of a cauldron with one or more coats of black acrylic paint and you want to wait for it to dry before going on to the next step. Once the paint is dry, you want to put hot glue on the edge of the opening and you want to keep adding more to make it look like it's dripping down from the side. You can also layer the glue so it doesn't look flat when it's done. You want to put glue all around the edge, but you want to do this in sections and you also want the glue to cool down before doing any more because the glass can get too hot and it can break. Once you like how the glue looks, you want to take a piece of chain and glue it where you would like it to be. Then you can put glue over the chain so it looks like it's being covered by the stuff coming out of the cauldron. After the glue is dry, you want to paint the glue any color that you would like. I painted mine green. When the paint is dry, you're all done. And you can leave it empty, or you can put whatever you would like in it. The next idea I'm going to show you how to make is this coffin jewelry dish. The first thing you want to do is that you want to start making a coffin template by drawing and cutting it out of a piece of paper. And to make it even on all sides, you can fold the paper in half and trim it. When you're done making the template, you want to roll a piece of air dry clay in between two pieces of parchment paper. This will be the base of your coffin and you can make it as thick as you want. The thickness of my clay is about a quarter of an inch. Once you're done rolling out the clay, you want to place your template in the clay. Then you can carefully cut off the excess clay, and you're going to use this later, so keep it flat. When you're done cutting off the excess, you can take the paper off and smooth out the sides. Now to make the sides, you want to use the excess clay you had earlier, or you can get new clay and roll it out. After you roll out the clay, you want to cut out a rectangle that's going to be taller than your base. I tried to keep the thickness at about 1 eighth of an inch and the height at about 3 fourths of an inch, but you can do whatever you would like. When you're done creating one side, you want to repeat the same steps until you have enough to go around the coffin. And you can use the first side as a template to create more. When you're done making the sides, you want to start attaching the sides, and you can start by scoring one of the longest sides of the base. Then you want to do the same thing on a piece of clay for the side, but you want to score it where you want to attach the base. After you do that, you want to put water on the scored part of the clay. Then you want to press the side on the base and cut off the excess.
When you're done with that side, you want to repeat the same steps for the other long side. The next side you want to do is the shortest end, and you want to follow the same steps by scoring where the clay will be attached and placing the side where you want it to go. After you press the clay together, you'll have to blend the corners together by taking water and blending the clay together with your finger. Once you're done with that side, you want to follow all of the same steps with the remaining sides. You want to start with the two last identical sides, and then you want to attach the last side next to those two sides. When you're done attaching the sides, you want to take the coffin carefully off of the parchment paper, and then you want to move it onto a piece of plastic wrap. Then you can fix anything you don't like with water, and you also want to make sure the sides are standing up straight. Also, if you can't get the corner on the inside to look right, you can try dipping something thin like a knife in water, and then you can blend the clay together with that. When you like how the coffin looks, you want to let the clay dry according to the clay's instructions. Once the clay is dry, you can paint the coffin any color that you want. I painted mine black, and later I decided to paint the bottom red. When the paint is dry, you're all done! The last idea I'm going to show you how to make is a wreath. For this wreath, you can use any wreath form you would like. I decided to use this spider web wreath form. You also want to get branches, flowers, spiders, and whatever else you would like. Once you have everything for your wreath, you can pull off your items or you can cut your items with wire cutters. And then you can lay them out where you want them to go. When you have an idea of where you want everything to go, you want to glue everything on. And I recommend putting your wreath on something so you don't glue anything onto the surface you're working on. I started gluing the flowers and then I glued the branches and the leaves on. I also glued everything either on the outer ring or on the web of the wreath. When you're done gluing everything on, you can flip it over, and you can add more glue on the back of everything to make sure it stays in place. Then if you have anything else you would like to put on your wreath, you can glue it on. I glued two spiders on the web, and one is hidden in the flowers.
Now you can either leave it how it is and hang it however you would like, or something optional you can do is that you can add a chain and hang it with that. If you decided that you wanted to add a chain, you can start by opening up a jump ring with pliers or you can use something else. Then you want to place the jump ring where you want it to be on the wreath and close it a little bit. I found it easier to close it with my hands, but you can use whatever you want. Then you can put the chain in the jump ring and close it. After you close the jump ring, you can add a second jump ring on the other side of the wreath. Then you can see how long you want your chain to be, and if you need to, you can carefully cut it. I was able to cut it with wire cutters, but depending on your chain, you may need to use something else. After you cut the chain, you can place the chain in the jump ring and close it. Then you're all done. That's how you make these Halloween decoration ideas. In the comments down below, let me know which DIY is your favorite, and if you like this video, subscribe to see more videos. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!